In this lecture, I'd like to introduce you to the concept of cancer. Cancer cells have a number of characteristics, and we're going to talk about three important ones here. The one you've probably heard of is that cancer cells divide too much. And this is true. They may be fast dividing or slow dividing. Some cancer grows slowly. But in any case, they are not regulated in how many times they divide and how fast they divide necessarily. That in itself, though, just dividing too much does not make something cancerous. That could be a tumor. That's what we call benign, a non-cancerous tumor. To make the tumor and the cells in there actually considered cancerous, we have to have the second characteristic of being invasive. There are some cells that move around the body, but cells generally are supposed to stay in one place. You know, after the embryonic stages, when you're developing, the cells do move around then, but then they should stay where they end up. And cancer cells don't do that. Uh, in early stages of cancer, um, beginning of cancer, those cells start moving into surrounding tissue areas. And then later stages, they may even move to far away areas. And you might have heard this word metastasis or metastatic cancer. That just means cancer that has moved to a far away place from where it started. And the third characteristic is that these cells don't die when they should. Because if you had these other problems, the cells dividing too much and the cells moving around, but the cells died when they were supposed to, then you'd probably be okay. Um, and that's what cells should do. When they start doing weird stuff, they're supposed to turn on these internal programs that kill the cell. That's a good thing. However, these cells don't do that. Um, regular cells also have a certain number of divisions they go through, and then it's done. The cell will die. And cancer cells don't have that either, which just allows them to continue replicating and allows them to continue moving around. So these are some of the characteristics that we target with cancer drugs and cancer treatments, the dividing too much, the moving around when they're not supposed to, and then not dying. I want to point out that all cancer is genetic because it's all due to changes in DNA. That's what the mutations you might have heard of are, are referring to. D DNA changes. So it is genetic, but it's not all inherited. Now, cancer itself is never inherited. You don't get cancer from your parent. But you can get um, genes that are from your parent that make it more likely to develop cancer. Usually those are your, your inheriting mutated versions of genes that don't do their job correctly. So some cancer is influenced by passed down DNA. And I do say influenced here because it's still a probability. And that's this third point. All cancer has a component of random chance. That's why we say, is it increased likelihood or decreased likelihood of getting cancer? So the things you do in your life increase or decrease your likelihood. The genetics that you have increase or decrease your likelihood. But in the end, there is a random chance because there's changes in DNA that can lead to cancer um, aren't guaranteed to happen or not to happen. Plus, there are always changes happening in the DNA that aren't even influenced by what you do or your genetics. Like, they just happen. And they're important because without the changes in DNA, uh, over time, we'd never get any variety in the population. Everything would be exactly the same. So we need the changes in DNA. It's just when they happen in the wrong place, then we can come up with problems like cancer. Cancer is generally named based on where the problem starts. So here are some examples. There's other types, but like a melanoma type cancer starts in the skin. A leukemia type cancer uh, it starts in the white blood cells of the bone marrow. Those are the ones that start dividing too much. If you hear carcinoma type cancers, those are in the linings of internal organs, like in your like liver lining, let's say, or they can also be in the skin, a different spot in the skin than melanoma, but still the covering of the body. Sarcomas are in connective tissue like bones, and lymphomas are in cells and tissues of the immune system. Cancer can develop at any age, as you've probably experienced, but you've noticed that it's more likely as you get older. 
And that's because you need multiple changes in your DNA to lead to those characteristics of cancer, dividing too much, moving around, and not dying. So in this picture we see here, we have these random mutations. Um, and so we have a change here. And so every cell that comes from this cell with the change has that mutation. And some cells are going to develop more mutations, and other ones would develop different ones. And so you have, um, we're just tracking one cell that ends up developing a number of mutations. And you can see these starred ones, that's what we are going to call a driver mutation. So that's actually a change that matters for developing cancer. And so eventually, these cells may develop a, a set of mutations that gives them cancer characteristics. So the reason when you get older, you know, you've had a longer time for your cell to develop these changes and get what we would might call the right characteristics to be a cancer cell. Cancer is the fourth leading cause of death in young people. And the chances of cancer during your lifetime are a little higher in males than females. They're one in two, so it's like a 50% chance, and one in three for females, 33% chance. Of course, we can do things to decrease or increase our probability of getting cancer. And again, it's a, it's a probability game or a likelihood that we do our best to influence in a positive way, um, but it does have random chance, so sometimes that just happens. So what does cancer end up doing in the end that causes um, people to die from it? Generally, body systems um, that are made of many organs, and you can see a bunch of examples here and in your book, they maintain what we call homeostasis. So the homeo refers to a steady, and stasis means state. So we're referring to a steady state. Now this is different than balanced. Balanced is where you're having things equal. Homeostasis may be unequal conditions. Like our body is not equal temperature with the environment, right? We wanna keep our body at a constant temperature in a small range even if it's different from the environment. So that's the homeostatic temperature range. We keep our fluids and our salt concentration at a certain range. That's homeostatic conditions. We keep our pH, how acidic or basic our body is in a certain range. We keep the um, number of hormones in a certain range. We keep the amount of neurotransmitters. We keep the amount of other signaling molecules the concentration of sugar in our blood. So that's something that will get out of whack. So when we have these cancer cells growing, they often stop regular body tissues from being able to do their job. And so that can lead to um, impacting homeostasis. Once the body gets out of homeostatic conditions, then we start having major problems. Organ systems can shut down and you can end up dying from cancer. So that's a basic introduction to what cancer is, um, what types of cancer there are, and how cancer ultimately affects the body.